to jump in. I'm going to quickly thank our sponsors and that sort of stuff. So my name is Chris Thompson. I'm the executive director here at Generator. I want to welcome you to another fantastic Reckless Ideas lecture. Um, I get to do the fun stuff, which is thank our sponsors. Uh, our first sponsor is uh, the uh, uh, our lead sponsor is a new sponsor. That's Hula, uh, which is 15, no, what, 150,000 square feet of office and co-working space right down on the lake and a surf club. Who, how can you complain about that? They're fantastic. Um, Russ Scully is a big supporter. Um, we thank them. As well as the office of Mayor Moreau Weinberger in the city of Burlington, another huge supporter of us, and we sincerely appreciate the support from, from all those folks. As well as Champlain College. This is actually a shared space that we um, uh, have with Champlain College, and they are very graciously uh, let us use it for events like this. So we're, we're sincerely appreciative of Champlain about that. Um, and uh, just a couple ground rules. We're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, Peter is gonna talk in just a, a few minutes, and then um, we're after the lecture. We're gonna do Q and A. And so I just ask that if you can, if you don't mind, holding your questions to the end of the lecture, and then we'll do that. And when you're asking your questions, just try to give people, everybody, a little bit of space to ask questions too, if you don't mind. And more than anything else, definitely hang out, have a little more pizza, have some more beer afterwards, and talk, collaborate, do all the fun stuff. Um, and that's that. So I want to introduce Melissa Rubinchuk, who is the center coordinator from the Vermont Complex oh. Systems Center. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I am introducing Professor Peter Sheridan Dodds, who is the director of the Vermont Complex Systems Center. Um, Peter's research focuses on system level big data problems in many areas, including language and stories, socio-technical systems, earth sciences, biology, and ecology. He has general interests in stories and narratives, language and communication, and complexification, contagion and robustness, and a long-term tilting at windmills goal to understand a theory of anything. Please join me in welcoming Professor Peter Dodds. Okay. <laughs> All right, very good. Thank you. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here, uh, and um, I appreciate the opportunity to tell you some interesting things, hopefully. Uh, I'm going to uh, try to thread a few pieces together uh, that I've been working on really for close to 20 years now. And, and so Melissa said I, I sort of indicated that I have a bit of a strange background, and it, it is a mixture of physics and then the social sciences. So I spent six years at MIT in a, um, a math physics degree, although I worked in earth systems there, and then uh, six years at Columbia where I was actually housed in, in the social sciences. So that means that no one wants to own you. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, so I'm going to talk about stories a little bit at the start. That's an enormous amount of uh, big field for me now and uh, something I think a, a lot about. So I just want to touch on that because it is all sort of tied together here. Uh, I want to give you a little bit about how, how well, how I think fame works, uh, how fate works and these sorts of things, um, how to become famous. So that's a, a freebie for you. Um, <clears throat> no cost. Uh, and so that's connected to super spreading, how things take off. Uh, a little bit here about Zipf's law. So these are these heavy tail distributions. This is what I call the statistics of surprise. I'll kind of fold some pieces together there. And then this, uh, this idea of lexical ultrafame, which is sort of the title of the talk in various ways, um, but something to do with Trump and God and then some unknown quantity, although a number of you in this room will know who that is. Okay, uh, and then this last piece that I want to get to is turbulent times, and that's the, uh, this effort we've been going through to try and quantify how there seems to be a speed up in news, if you like, or just what people talk about. And uh, can we actually you know, put a number on that? All right, so I, I always uh, like to point out my cat, Pratchett. So um, my family's here, and we're all big Pratchett fans. Basically, we're Pratchett's uh, support system. Um, anyway, he's at home asleep. Anyway, he's a good guy. He's on Instagram, and uh, he doesn't care about that either. Uh, so uh, yeah, in fact, uh, this is, uh, let's see, let's, let's get this one. He's very helpful. Look at this guy. So look at this guy. Just great. <laughs> Very, very helpful guy. Okay. So, okay. That's enough of that from you. Nope. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Okay. All right. So, Vermont Complex System Center. 
Uh, we've been around for about 10 years. Uh, we have weird mascots and we have fun. And, uh, but it's a, really, you know, it's a very serious uh, outfit because in fact, it's, it's really um, where science was al always going, right? Trying to understand systems. We had 300 years of um, breaking things down, the golden age of reductionism, I would call it. You know, we figured out atoms only 100 years ago. It's not long. Uh, DNA and so on. So understanding these systems we're part of that are inside us and, and all sorts of uh, you know, things we worry about in the world uh, is, is where science will, has to go. And we're, we're, in, we're in a position to do it. We can measure things, we have the data, we have the computational power, that all will get better. So that's our Roboctopus. We actually do have a whole um, educational uh, thing that we've built up, so we're very much research and education put together. Uh, data science is a new thing at UVM in the undergrad uh, piece, but we've, we've built out this complex systems and data science uh, uh, scaffolding, right? So there's a, a certificate, we have a, a new certificate winner here uh, in the, in the, in the uh, audience. Uh, masters, and now we have a PhD in complex systems and data science. It's been extremely um, gratifying to build that up and, and see things take off. Uh, some good things recently, we uh, got $5 million from Mass Mutual. We have this nice relationship with them, uh, connections at different scales. The CEO went to UVM, so that always helps. Um, some of our former students are there uh, in the data science team. So this is a good thing. It's a health and wellness piece that we're, we're working with them on, and uh, it's so sort of a center of excellence. Lots of other funding coming in in interesting ways. We do try to really work on good things that, that are meaningful and, and help the world. We've got a team, I'm part of a computational story lab, and so my colleague Dan, uh, Chris Danforth and I run that together. There are story labbers here in the audience. Uh, and they're all over the world, they're great people, they're doing all sorts of cool things. If you wanna read more about what we do later on, this is a, an outside piece that appeared a few years ago that's pretty fun, it's, it's really fun. Okay, so um, I have tarot cards. I'm not gonna explain them any more beyond that, but um, that's just, they, they exist. Uh, so that will appear now and then. So the pouring data, right? And this is just to talk about where we are now. I will tell you about old experiments, experiments of ours, and they're pre, in a sense, this big data era for social sciences. All these fields go from data scarce to data rich. It's a natural progression of science. Uh, but this is, this is kind of, you know, when I was doing my PhD, this is a little bit more where you were, although I did work on some big data. You know, you get to think in your space, um, but then this happens, right? So this has been a, a, uh, an issue, and, and you need to contend with reality, um, and then you go back to this. So pure math, you just kind of oscillate between here and here, or um, philosophy and so on, which is great, and you, you should do that. Um, string theory, too, actually. Anyway, but just be, just, yeah. Anyway, we're down in this terribleness here, yeah. Okay, there's these sorts of things. Um, you know, I, I had to sort of feel my way around, like, what, what is science, right? And it's really describe and explain, and there are these other pieces that come after. But describe has become really hard, right? Because we have these masses of data about things. Uh, this is a long time ago. This is Lord Kelvin, who, you know, not the greatest person in the world necessarily, but to measure is to know, right? Really sort of stating it. But he said some other things, right? The physics is done. This is at the end of uh, the 1800s, right? Just more measurement. So quantum was a bit surprising. So chaos. Very, just very upsetting. Um, X-rays will prove to be a hoax and my beard is cool. So, <laughs> you know, this is what happens in books. You know, the quote from the famous person you like and it apparently says everything you want, but you leave out all the other quotes. All right. So what I'm trying to do here is thread a few things together, right? There are all these, this constellation of ideas and pieces. It's sort of a Lego set of madness. Um, but I'm gonna try and, uh, for those of you who've seen some of this before, I'm gonna try to maybe go through a, a different threading of things perhaps. All right, so stories. Uh, I just wanna, this is huge to me. I think uh, after thinking about um, social phenomena for a long time, I do kind of think of stories as being the sort of big piece. Uh, you know, um, and, and people have all sorts of responses to this, like yes, obviously, or no, that's terrible, and so on. But um, I, I, I do think it's enormous. And you know, there are these sorts of efforts to kind of uh, you know, show just how much of uh, civilization is governed by uh, things we've written down and passed around between each other. Uh, so yeah, we're story believers, storytellers, um, and I'm gonna sort of distill away from that to the most basic thing of just being talked about, right? Just talking, yeah, which is fame. Uh, but I just wanna tie a few things together. I mean, I think this is all quite beautiful, right? So this is the economics being thought of as code. This is uh, taking computer science algorithms and then applying them to real life. So this is a pretty crazy self-help book. Um, and then this is taking fairy tales and then trying to help people understand computer science algorithms, right? So Hansel and Gretel and is in, in this example, it's a search algorithm. <laughs> uh, you 
but it, it, you know, it is deep. I mean, a book that we've had around for many, many years that many of us, you know, numerical recipes in C or Fortran. I mean, the word recipes, very nice. Um, and then some more stuff there with math. Okay, so storytellers are enormous in society. I want to give you just a few lenses on that. This is uh, work that was done at the Media Lab by um, Cesar Hidalgo and his team. And very simple idea, and you can think about whether this makes sense or not, but just go to Wikipedia, find people who are written about, and find how many languages they're written in, right? So Tom Brady, you know, three languages, Aristotle, most of them, right? So who's more famous? Da, 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 da. So you can play around with that, you know, how much was written about them and, and so on. But it, in essence, it's just how many different languages are you written uh, about it? How much do you spread across the world? And so this is for Japan. So a, you can play around with this. It's called Pantheon. Uh, this is for Japan. These are people who are born after 950, so you can toggle all these things. And this is a, one of these little tree maps which just shows you where the, you know, what category these people are in. Right? So here's some scientists over here, celebrities. And I'm going to say that these people, comic artists, actors, right, they're storytellers. And sports are storytelling things. They're, you know, they're spontaneous uh, generators of stories. And of course, as you know, test cricket is the, um, the best. Uh, in that category, um, really kind of is actually, but uh, you know, so these are sort, you know, these are, there are narratives to this, and you think about way, the ways people talk about sports. They're very much about scripts and so on. Okay, so that's that's Japan. This is uh, the U.S. again with that same restriction, 1950 on. You see the the incredible, you know, outweighing of of um, actor here and singer, musician. You know, these are all complex sort of storytelling things. Uh, sports again here, politicians shrunk down. Of course, they tell stories too. Okay, uh, and then this is a, a, this was actually done by, um, you, you find this on the site. These are, this is for the sort of globally for the world, different time, uh, different times as you can see. And you can sort of, sort of see the diminishing of politician, for example, and then the rise of these kinds of characters, right? So actor, actor coming up, and, and in this case, sports becomes the dominant thing. Uh, so if you look at how a, a, a civilization becomes more complex, uh, you'll see maybe to start with, if you, you know, if you look at a particular country or a region, what's their history of famous people by this measure, you see you know, maybe um, political leaders to start with and then maybe some soccer players and so on. And, and as it grows up, you get more and more of the uh, storytellers, right? And movie directors, right? So you need a fairly complex society before you can become a movie director. You have to invent it. Uh, and then the most recent one is um, video game directors, right? That's a very complicated thing, and you're telling this pretty complicated kind of story. So you see that popping up for the most, I would say, I mean, let's say sophisticated society. Uh, a little bit more about stories. This is a paper that came out uh, at the end of 2017. It's about a hunter-gatherer family and um, a, a group people in, in the Philippines. Uh, I'm just taking this picture from this article uh, in The Atlantic by Ed Young. So, Number of things here. Storytelling is the skill most valued, right? So that's the first thing. It's the most valued skill in this society, right? So it's a, it was a study asking people about everything. Uh, so that came to be the, that came out as the most valued piece above hunting, for example. Uh, and then the stories in this particular group they encode pro-social norms, you know, cooperation, right? How to get along, survival, right? So they're about survival of the group. And I won't get to say much about it today, but most of our stories. It depends on your culture, but a lot of our stories about individuals, and it's hard for us to think about how groups behave. And indeed, a lot of the work we do with systems is simulating things and seeing how they behave, how, how you, you know, emergence, right? How, how do you get collective behavior uh, coming out of these individual interactions? They are hard for us to intuit. We really have to work hard to get those stories into our heads. Uh, and then the extra piece on top is that the storytellers have more children, right? So. There's a super survival of the stories. The stories themselves are about survival. They get passed on, and the golden tongue people um, also get passed on, get reproduced. All right. So I thought that worked. I'll say, uh, just, uh, this is just a little nutshell thing. So uh, fundamental events of, of stories that you see over and over, hatchings, matchings, and dispatchings, right? So um, that's sort of a, a core of so many stories we, we talk about. Um, uh, and, and you know, so, you know, you can think it's crude, but often they're about survival algorithms. You know, Jane Austen is talking about getting married all the time, right? This is about you know, uh, survival in a way. Um, and we get very excited about things like immortality and so on, right? We write a lot about death, you know. Um, okay. And uh, so, again, the individuals versus group survival thing, hard. 
Uh, and, and all of these, these stories, you know, well, I mean, we can get some crazy ones, but they're about what may have happened, what's possible, and, and, and you know, what's unlikely, what you shouldn't do, and so on, cautionary tales. But they are dynamic parts. I'm going to sort of say that for stories. All right, so that's good. Another one of these things. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about fame. So these are contagious stories, if you like. Um, and I'll just sort of boil this down. Uh, so Mona Lisa, incredibly, I mean, this is, is famous for being famous, right? It's the Kim Kardashian of paintings. And um, I, I feel like I've said something terrible. There. But um, <laughs> I should just leave. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't help it. Anyway, so, uh, but it is, it's famous. And I'm, you know, maybe some of you have been to see it. I, it it's, it's, for those who have seen it, I suppose, in person, it's generally famous for not being that great, right? Surprisingly small and so on, all these things. Um, so why, and it also took 400 years for us to figure this out, that this was the greatest painting ever made by a human, right? Which is sort of how it works, right? We think that. Uh, this is uh, Harry Potter. You know, if once, you move, once your story gets made into movies and then into Legos, you know, you've done pretty well, right? So, I mean, I don't think our science papers will ever end up as Lego kits, but, you know, like, one can aspire, right? There's Nobel Prizes and then there's a Lego kit involving you, which is, you know, that's Doc Brown, right? Uh, anyway, so 12 uh, publishing houses rejected Harry Potter. You know, like, no good, right? This is not going to work. Like, why would we do this? And it was only because of uh, the eight-year-old granddaughter of, uh, of the 13th one read it at the behest of the, of the CEO and said, oh, you know, what, what about this? In some funny English voice. And, uh, and, and she thought it was good, and um, they published it, and it took off, right? So how do you not know this? How do you not know this? Uh, this, you know, in a, in a bigger story, there are, there are an infinite number of these sorts of stories, but this, and this is a, this is a work by uh, Quran um, that goes back and looks at uh, the fall of Eastern Europe and says, you know, people really didn't expect this to happen. It was shocking, right? Many of you were born after this happened. But this is, you know, in history, this was very surprising. So how does that happen? You know, and there's a lot of, you know, theory about collective action and how people come together and spontaneous things. There's lots of fun stuff in math about uh, tipping points and so on. But anyway, I want to uh, quickly go through uh, how this, uh, we can understand these, these amazing spreading events that uh, at once afterwards entirely, ent seem entirely reasonable. And we give all these reasons for why the Mona Lisa is the most famous painting in the world. And generally, it's uh, intrinsic to it. You know, it's how it's painted. The eyes follow you around the room. We, give, we want to give those reasons. We want, we want quality to be the, the, the underlying reason for why it's spread. Uh, <laughs> So there's this paradox, though. Why didn't we know? You know, why didn't we sort of somehow? Why didn't the first person who read Harry Potter just go, "Oh my God, this is going to be amazing"? Like, why is that? Now, if it's out of rubbish, you know, and I, my wife has worked on a slush pile, right? Slush uh, for a, for um, for a short stories, and and a lot of stuff is discarded straight away. Um, fair enough. So, you know, we have we're not that terrible. Uh, Okay, so we understand bushfires, sparks will start fires, things take, take off, uh, and it's a system property, right? If it's raining massively, then we don't expect fires to take off. Uh, we know about dryness, we know that this is this collective thing. Uh, but we, we're going to make these mistakes about, well, I'll talk about social fires and the social wild. Um, and the mistake in a way, we kind of, we'd go back and we'd find the match, we'd pick up the match if it was lit by a match and say, this match is really important, right? We need to make another one like this or like reproduce it exactly because that's the thing. Okay, of course, there's a match sitting on the tipping point for Gladwell, which is full of all sorts of problems. And if you're an academic, you probably hate him. And you know, like, fair enough, okay, yeah. It's interesting, he now says he's a storyteller. It's interesting, which is to say, but, he, but he's very much taken as uh, sort of a, as reproducing science. Anyway. Okay, so I'll give you three reasons and then a couple of mistakes. So uh, Homo, this is from XKCD, if we have fans, right? So we're Homo narrativists, right? We are storytellers and we will find stories in randomness, right? You flip the graph upside down and we'll say, oh yeah, that totally makes sense. That's why that company went up and down. Uh, right, so this is all sports commentary. They're very sure about it. And there's a nice, there's some rollovers. And um, one of the, the, the extra piece for this was, uh, and more fundamentally, D&D, &D, right? Because it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I won't necessarily play this, but this is if you're a, a, this is a Monty Python piece, and it's from one of the great treatises on religion, um, Life of Brian. And, uh, you know, where they say, you know, you know they, they want to know how to follow him. And he says, you're all individuals. And they say, yes, we are all individuals, right? So it goes... <laughs> 
except for one who says, I'm not. Right, yeah. And they tell him to shut up. And then his mother comes out, out and she's very upset. All right, so uh, that's a summary. You can find it. Okay. So, but individual narratives, you know, that, that's, that's you know, we don't understand stories very well. We, we've, and it, again, it depends on culture, but particularly in the West, we're really good at a saying, you know, that there's an individual that drove everything. It's much easier to understand. I mean, this is Leviathan, right? Like, that's why we should just have a king, you know, or a queen, because it's, we can understand it instead of some weird group of people. I will play this. This is, uh, well, you can believe it or not, I suppose. This is a lyre bird from Australia, and the lyre is the tail, but it is also an L-I-A-R lyre. That's a car alarm. It's a little dramatic. I hopefully um, this uh, David Attenborough didn't do anything. You know, this is the devastation of the forest, right? So uh, it's on one of our coins in Australia. My accent is messed up, but I am actually Australian. So um, full disclosure. Anyway, uh, so we're really, we're amazing imitators, right? So this is the third point. We're incredible imitators. I mean, think about how we learn language. Uh, we, and we, we don't necessarily learn it from our parents. We learn it from those around us, um, which is, you know, you know, accents and so on. My children do not have an Australian accent. Um, one a little bit, yeah. Okay, so we're really good imitators, but we get excited about this. We think parrots are pretty cool when they can reproduce what um, you know someone said 100 years ago, usually kind of vulgar. Um, it's problematic that they live so long. Uh, but we, we get really excited about that, but we're amazingly good at imitating, and we do it in a, one of our sort of bad superpowers is that we copy each other and then think we're acting individually, right? So, okay, let me see if I can get this to jump. Okay, so again, this is the Mona Lisa, so let's try to work through this. So there's a book by David Sassoon that actually goes through the history of it. So here are a couple of mistakes. This is where we, we get um, messed up about fame. So if you go and see it, it's, it's kind of small, and you're like, what, what's going on? You know, so if you make out, make it big. It gives you a, you know, people get excited straight away. Um, it was stolen. So there's a history of these incidents, right? And then uh, hidden in World War II, it, got, it started to get a narrative for us. And, and so, you know, Leonardo also, his stock was rising during this time, being, you know, uh, sort of seen again as this incredibly famous person, uh, or attack. So it, it, it developed this fame, and fame is being talked about. Uh, okay, so, so we, we do, with hard work, uncover the sort of the trajectory of um, things that have become famous, and, and we can't, but it is very hard for us. We really struggle with it. Uh, anyway, so if you really still think the Mona Lisa is the greatest thing in the world, I would encourage you to read that book. Okay, this is an old experiment of ours. Um, it's finally published in 2006, but it probably ran the, the few years beforehand. Matt Salganic, who's a professor of sociology now at Princeton, and my um, colleague um, Duncan Watts, who was at Microsoft for a while, and then uh, is going back to Penn, somehow ha is a professor in three different colleges. I don't know how he's done it. Um, okay, so what we did was, we ran, and I'll just very quickly tell you how this worked. We, we, we set up this experiment, and this is pre-Twitter and all these sorts of things. Uh, so I know I had about 100,000 people come along. You were shown, you can't, I know you can't read this, but the, what you're shown is this sort of array of 48 uh, songs. You click on it, and you listen to it, and then you could rate it and download it if you want. So that was the game, right? You know it's, in, you know it's this kind of experiment thing, um, and you're allowed to, the, the thing with the benefit we're giving you is you can download a song and keep it which was sort of a cool thing then, right? Apple Music didn't exist. Uh, right, so that was sort of the, the payoff. Um, and you know, if you didn't like it, of course you, would, you, you shouldn't download it. So pe what people didn't know is that there were nine parallel worlds, right? So there's one world where you couldn't see what anyone else had done before. And there are eight other worlds where as time went along, you could see the number of downloads of these songs. And in this first version, we showed everyone their own random presentation, right? So you've got, now we're running the world nine times. You know, so Mona Lisa is in one of these, it's in all of these worlds, and we're just like, does it take off? And does Harry Potter take off in all of those worlds? Uh, and, and then we change this version where you can't see it, but there's a long list. It's a natural kind of thing, right? The most downloaded loaded song is at the top, and the least downloaded one is at the bottom. And I don't have all the, I, I have some pieces here, but what, this, is what, this is one outcome. So there are 48 songs. What's, this is their ranking, and we'll come back to ranking again in this talk. This is the most downloaded song. This is the 48th downloaded song in the independent world where you can't see anyone else. So we're taking them as people who are judging this of their own, you know, in, uh, absent any social input. 
you've got this really weak social input in this other, you don't know the people, you've never met them, you know, but you can see the downloads. Uh, so what you see here is this big scrambling, right? So there, there is a song that most people actually kind of like, right? So that's one that did very well. There's some terrible, and I can tell you it was terrible. There's a terrible, little garage band kind of songs, right? Um, you know, we wrote to them and said, would you like to be on this thing? And they're like, yes. Um, you know, if anyone wrote to us with a lawyer, we're like, no, 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 it's too, too serious, right? So there are a couple of songs, but there's a huge scrambling. There's one song that came 40th in one world and first in another world. I mean, that's a huge variation in outcome. Uh, and we weren't entirely controlling, you know, the quality, but you could then play around with this and really try to, you know, get songs that were very similar to each other. And there are games like this. this is, so this experiment's been repeated in various ways. It's been done for um, academic uh, publishing, where you send the papers off to different groups and you get all sorts of different results, as you might expect. So you get these, uh, the one thing that's not shown here is the more you can see exactly what other people have done, which is by showing people in a very clear line instead of a random layout. So that's like turning the social signal up. You actually get stronger inequality, right? So the most successful one in a world will be more successful but it's less predictable, right? So there's this sort of paradox, it's less predictable. And, and then what we're gonna do on top though, we were in, we're just in one of these worlds and this, you know, Harry Potter's out here and it's so much you know, further in front of the one before it that um, after it, that you know, people can't be wrong, right? I mean, people can't be wrong, they know what they're doing. I mean, we, we have inbuilt instincts to uh, you know, adopt what other people are doing for good reason, right? I mean, some of it is just survival, like do what the rest of the group's doing. You can't assess everything. So if people wear Ugg boots or blonde stones, which are very good, um, you know, then, then maybe they're good, right? So we have, and, and, and then sometimes we just copy each other, right? We just, we can't help that as well. Okay, so, uh, so this, this was this experiment that's, you know, become pretty famous, ironically, um, about fame. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's holding on. So we did one sneaky thing at the end, which was we ran one more experiment where we had our 48 songs going along, and then we just flipped the chart upside down, right? Which is more what psychologists like to do. Uh, so we flipped the chart upside down. So the song that was 48 is now number one, and the one that's number one was, is now 48. We made a couple of copies of this, because why not? We can just make two copies of these worlds. And we let the original world keep going. So this number one song keeps getting downloaded. You know, it's the top of the list. People look at it. They also look at the bottom of the list, right, straight away. People do that. Um, the 48th one is still, you know, not good. But this, this, this is uh, song 48, which has been, you know, we, this is payola, right? This is where, you know, you do whatever you want to pretend to people that something is really popular. Uh, and now it's doing well, right? This is where it was in this other one, and we know that things don't get sorted out, but now, the thing is, yes, you can, you can advertise and corrupt things and so on so that your uh, movie with Ben Affleck in it does well, but, and that's, that's good for you, but overall, there's less downloads, right? In this case, there are less downloads. The system performs more poorly because people are you know, being tricked and um, or, you know, misled and so on, and even though, on their own, there's gonna be a lot of different you know, variation in what's, what's an outcome. It's worse if you, you know, uh, coerce people. So mistake number two is you get away from this individual narrative and so on, and then you think, oh, it's all about how you know, people connect and, and spread. And I have to say, I've been talking about this for an unbelievable amount of time, but um, many, many years, 10 years, more than 10 years. Uh, and and you know, Facebook's sort of the great example of this, right? Like, so you see, you start to get into the links and you say, oh, you know, if we knew how these people were influencing each other, and this is, all goes way back into this, you know, sociological literature thinking about this, but now we're at a point where we can measure it, right? And start to, you know, uh, maybe piggyback in some way on these little, these links. And there've been many efforts by Facebook over the years, and you know, basically they've succeeded into uh, monetizing people's, you know, behavior and, and their links. Uh, but this is getting into the links and messing around with that. Of course, this is, uh, this is uh, from, it's a Washington Post article. It's only half of the pieces, but this is a nice 14 year history of um, Zuckerberg saying he's sorry for things. Yeah. And we'll, we'll do better in the next time. Um, it's kind of incredible. <laughs> uh, Pre Facebook, even, which was good. Our hearts go out. Okay, so, um, the, so this is the old theory. This is from sociology, the old theory of influence. Radio came along, right? Big change, right? You have massive change in the way things are spread. Telegraph is incredible because now you have this sort of instant communication. It's still, a struggle, but you know, you're not sending a horse from one side of the country to the other, or a pony. 
Um, in principle, this very, very quick uh, tr um, you know, transfer of information, but then you get radio, and now that's broadcast, right? That's a very different thing. Uh, this is, as I said, these old theories. So this is from the 50s. Katz and Lazarfeld came up with this idea of um, this two-step model of influence. So, that, so you start to think of the media bathing everything, but there are these influences. We love this still, right? There are influences on Instagram and all these things everywhere. Sure, they sell things. Um, that doesn't mean they, that the system really works well. But of course, it's much more like this. It's some mixed up thing, right? It's a network story. Um, part of what we were hindered with before was we couldn't measure these things. And you know, it's still very hard to measure influence. It's still difficult. But if you're sitting on top of Facebook, you have a ton of data about how people are interacting. Twitter, yeah. I'll come to Twitter later on. We have 10% of all tweets, and I don't know if it helps us. Anyway, this is uh, super spreading. Uh, and, and I'm just going to sort of state this, right? So it's, about, it's much more about messages, right? And this is all work with, with Duncan. Um, that you, it's very simple. It's like a disease spreading thing. You know, you want the, the, the message, whatever it is that you receive, you enjoy it for some reason, and you want to pass it on. And it could be a good or bad message. Uh, and obviously, this can be you know, used for terrible, terrible um, things, the recklessness. I want to say that some of our early work, uh, because we're at Columbia, and um, Jonah Peretti, who started um, BuzzFeed, was good friends with my colleague Duncan, and he would come and talk to us. Um, it's funny, he initially thought he could spread anything. Uh, he had this sort of big success with making kind of a joke about Nike and um, sweatshops in an email that spread all around the world. So he had, it was kind of like winning the, you know, winning, uh, the one arm bandit when you walk into a, uh, you know, a game or something. Uh, the first, you know, the first time you think you can do it all the time. Anyway, uh, but we, th this really is kind of codifying, this was, a, these are ridiculous things, but they're codifying these simple little things that people pass on, jokes, right? So it's enjoyable. If you think it's funny, then you, and you want to tell other people, right? That's a successful joke. So these are often jokes. But, so BuzzFeed comes along, it's full of this nonsense, but then uh, news, it adds news, and it becomes you know, a pretty serious news outfit, which was a bit surprising for people to start with, but news, of course, is a thing that spreads massively, certain kinds of news. Uh, so let's just talk about these words a little bit. So fate uh, mean, is, is past tense, right? It's written, right? So uh, it's, been, it's been foretold. Uh, so I'm going to say story of fate is the only thing we have, although there's, there's a lot of complications with universality. and Okay, but basically... That's the story. Uh, destiny is probabilistic. And then we have these, it's just nice that these things are buried in these words, right? Fame comes from the word pharma, to, which means to talk. So it's exactly got the right um, uh, piece in there. So it's about being talked about. Uh, and then we have these in other words that mean fame. Renown means to say the name again or reclaim, right? To say, to shout again. Actually, that goes back to um, moo, I think. Yeah, right. Um, cows. Okay. All right. Connected to lowing. There you go. Right. Oh, cows spreading spreading stories. You actually get contagion with whales too. Actually, with whale songs. You know, it's like it's everywhere. All right, Oscar Wilde. So this is the kind of fame we'll talk about today, uh, which is you know there's only one thing uh, in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. Right. So these one of his famous little pieces. He would have loved Twitter, I think, uh, as would Dorothy Parker and lots of these sorts of people, or from their computer out of the window, but I think that would have been good. Anyway, so this is, uh, this is you know, just being talked about. We've done a lot of work on happiness and valence and sentiment and so on, but I want to just simply focus on volume of you know, how much some, something has got the light shone on it. Um, okay, I'll just show you this, right? This is how to make things spread. This is the freebie, right? So you, this is what you want. You want people to pass things on. You advertise it, fine. Um, and I'm going to say that, you know, to do this authentically, to get something to deeply spread, to, you know, to stay in a culture, you know, you don't want to be messing with people's um, links. I mean, when they figure this out, they're very upset, usually. Uh, but what you don't see, the video shows this, there's a little iteration, right? So you have some square, nobody likes it. Of course, you iterate, iterate, iterate. And the thing that takes off, you get in behind. But um, and BuzzFeed and all these other places have done this sort of thing just with, because uh, it's much easier digitally, right? With, with headlines, for example. You put out 10,000 headlines and see which one takes off. Okay, so lots of, uh, lots of things can go wrong, um, but it's about making things that spread. Um, so I'll talk about the social wild, right? You want to have stuff that has social value some, for some reason it spreads, uh, get out of the interactions. So it can all go wrong, and we've seen a, a lot of that recently perhaps, but you know, forever, right? Propaganda, all sorts of things. Uh, there is this 
I mean, I think fundamental observation. Right? Billions of people can be harmoniously wrong. Right? It's, it's an unsettling thing, but it's true. Uh, and so, but here's the challenge. You know, what's a societal uh, vaccine for conspiracy theories? You know, you, you would hope education. We could we could try that. But what's 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 the you know like? It seems like we're just running around like with Snopes is sort of our one thing. You know, we're just sort of fighting off like this miasma of conspiracy theories with Snopes, which is like you know like someone with a marshmallow gun. You know, against against Germany. All right. So uh, I want to talk a little bit. More about these, these uh, uneven distributions that come out of all sorts of systems, not just social ones. Uh, and you know, I've got my funny tarot card, but there, uh, there's, there's usually some heavy tailedness to these distributions. Right? So let's play around with this. So diffusion, it's a famous thing in physics and it happens all the time. Stuff just kind of moves around. And so this is a little random walk, right? This is, this is all this is, a random walk. So if you take a lot of little random walks and you can you, there's uh, Price is Right has a version of it with um, Plinko. Um, the Romans used to make a Plinko for themselves. People love this little thing. Uh, you know, it's the theory for black shoals for the stock market. Randomness is an incredibly important thing. It gives us all sorts of stuff. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to let these little random walkers. I did, this is some time thing here, and they just can look, go up or down, right? That's all it is. It's just a random thing, flipping coins. And if you look, if you set off a whole army of these little random walkers and you look at where they are after time, there'll be this normal distribution. So they're an incredibly famous structure, right? E to the minus x squared with a root pi somewhere. It's amazing. Um, so very Gaussians, normals, whatever we want to call them. But they, they do occur everywhere, but they're pretty boring is what I'm going to say, all right? And uh, yeah, we shouldn't be, at this point, unhappy to see them, but uh, they're, they're kind of boring. So, even in just simple randomness, and this is something I have in one of my courses, there's some very, really fantastic, delicious stuff uh, that's, that's very surprising. So, for example, um, if you have a little, you're playing a little game, right? So, coins, you flip a head, you go up, tail, you go down, you're playing with someone, right? So, you, you're winning if you're up here, they're winning if they're down here. So, if, a, if you flip a head to start with, right? So, you're in front, I think it's pretty good. The expected time to um, come back to, to here is infinite. That's the, that's the weird thing, right? You can certainly imagine, like, you flip a tail straight away. Like, 50% of the time, you'll come back, right? But the, this is called a first return thing. So you imagine all these little walkers. What's the probability that this walker comes back after some time, T? It's a random walk. It should, it should come back kind of quickly. But on average, the average time for all of those random walkers is infinite. They will come back. There are different framings of this depending on your era. This is your drunkard's walk, right? Or your friend perhaps these days is texting and they're just lurching around on the sidewalk. Um, and then what's the probability they come back? Well, you'll always get them back, but it will take an infinite amount of time on average, which is weird. So there are really strange things just sitting in randomness and randomness is all around, bouncing around and you know, structure comes out. I just wanna point that. Okay, see, so we have postcards from places we visit. This is the snormals. Lots of these, they're everywhere. But this is kind of reality, right? For the things we really worry about, it's the statistics of surprise, right? So this, this is the terrain that we, we live on. Um, there's a sort of a, um, a Princess Bride kind of uh, touch in some of this. So, and this is the thing I just showed you, just a random walk, you know, so random walks, they're fine. We just have a normal distribution, um, the forest of forgettable events. Um, but this is the kinds of things we see in lots of systems is this kind of jaggedness, right? And it's like things can go pop and explode, trees of unusual size. All right, so I'll give you a few more, a few uh, kind of robust examples of this. This is just a, this is really random, but it is about randomness, so fair enough. This is a great paper in Nature from 1999 where uh, they use random walks on a hexagonal lattice to actually lay out, to figure out all the um, reasonable neckties for men, which is pretty great. Um, and they discovered a few new ones that people hadn't, hadn't tied. And I actually fixed up how I tied the winds. And, anyway, so there you go. That's a fun thing. All right, that's a little deep. Randomness is great, and, and that, was, that was a gift. Okay, so long tail. So this is, this, is a, this is a great study from 2011. This is to get at how we don't understand these kinds of distributions, right? So we're talking about things, the distributions behind um, earthquake sizes, financial collapse uh, uh, disasters, wealth inequality, right? If you randomly select someone from the... The U.S. How much money do they have, or wealth do they have? That you know, this is a classic example, right? It's going to be a really long tail. Most of the time, you get people too much money, 
you know, but there is Bill Gates sitting in there somewhere and Jeff Bezos. So you could pull them out. And if you sort of were, if this was connected to like, like some, you know, explosion or something, you know, you'd be really surprised. Uh, but if it was by their height, not so boring, right? You never get someone who's 10,000 times taller than someone else or a million times taller. But that's what you get from the sampling. And it grows over time. You get all these like little ones. You're like, oh, this isn't so bad. And then there's one that's 10 times as big. We codify it, maybe the best way we do that is in floods, the idea of a 100-year flood or a 1,000-year flood, which we then usually end up saying, well, the 100-year flood happens every 10 years now, and we're very confused. Right. Um, climate change is awesome. So, uh, so money is belief. And so here are these questions that in this paper they asked. So uh, there were Norton, Dan Arley, you might know him. He's uh, famous, uh, pretty famous for some of his books he's put out, Irrational Rationality or something. Mike Norton, who's at the um, Harvard Business School. So they ask people to estimate, and I get people to do this in my class, um, estimate the wealth uh, owned by individuals grouped into quintiles. No one knows what quintiles are, so this is kind of a, this helps you a little bit. Uh, and then, then, what do you believe people should own? So this, you know, we're gonna get a little intense there. Um, and I have a whole collection over many years now of what people say to this. But the idea is, the extremes would be, you know, if you estimate, like, you know, there's one person that has all the money, right? So 100% of the, the wealth is in that top quintile, or you know, it's just some of that 20% and no one else has any. And then everyone has the same amount, it'd be 20, 20, 20, 20, like this. So the quintiles, fifths of 100. So whatever you put down, the number has to decrease, right? So the wealthiest one is the first quintile. All right, so this is, this is what they uh, found. So it's a survey, it's a simple survey. Uh, this is the actual, and this is for maybe, I think it's around about, well, after 2000. It's you know, some estimate of the actual wealth distribution. This is what it was like, right? So this is 85% had, um, the top 20% has 85% of the wealth. The next 20% has about 10% of the wealth. The next 20%, so now we're going from 40 to 60, only has about 5%, and you can't see the bottom 40%, right? Now, this is more well understood, I perhaps, but because people talk about the 1%, sort of, but the 1% says nothing. Like there was 1% of everything, you know, like it doesn't really tell you things. There's a variations connected to this, like the 80-20 rule or the 90-10 rule, people will invoke these things, um, which kind of get at a little bit of these distributions, but they're bigger and wilder than that. They're much richer things. So, okay, so this is what people estimated, right? So they're off, right? So they have that the bottom 20% has some, right? And then the top 20%, yeah, you know, and then the ideal, you know, this is, this is like way beyond Scandinavia. I mean, this is totally insane. And these are Americans. Like, what's going on, right? So this is a really weird study because I kind of just armed them. And then the next result that's pretty great with this is, and I know this might be a bit hard to see. Again, this is the actual uh, distribution of wealth. And this is estimated broken down into categories, right? So I'll just tell you what they are. This is people earning uh, less than 50K, 50 to 100, or greater than 100. So you see they're very similar. They do have the trend you might expect, right? That people who are wealthier tend to think there's more wealth in the top 20%, but it's not really very much. These are people who voted for Bush, voted for Kerry, uh, women versus men. So Bush versus Kerry, you know, that makes sense. In a, uh, that, actually, that's interesting. Um, but anyway, the thing is, there's not much variation here. And this is the ideal for that same set of um, people broken in the same categories. Not much variation either as well. So this is a really weird thing where you've asked people a question, which you would think would be very polarizing, um, but you've asked in a way that, you know, kind of threw them off. Uh, anyway, so the 1% framing doesn't make any sense, but we can we can talk about it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> God, this is ridiculous. Okay, we'll, we'll show you. Oh, the cat is next to this. And that's an ice cream maker in the background. I'm showing you my pedagogy. <laughs> you know, you have to, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, too easy. Okay, Boggle's a great game. I got it. Actually, I have a Boggle, I have a, I have a travel Boggle in my bag at all times. Um, okay, I'm gonna point, Zip's Law. Zip is a very interesting character. It's 1949, this um, great work of his came out, a uh, bit of a, Interesting. Not that much known about him, but he's, you know, other than his work. And he passed away the next year, uh, only age 50. He was at Harvard, very interested in, uh, he's a linguist, actually, and he was thinking about word usage, right? And so we'll talk about words in the remainder of all this. 
Uh, but he started to realize that uh, if you take whatever system you have and you look at its components, so we could take Moby Dick and break it into words, terrible thing to do, but reading it might be more laborious. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's a fair option. Um, but you count up all the these and all the Mobies and all the whales and all the Nantuck Nantuckets, and then you could put them alphabetically or whatever, but let's say you order them from the ones that are most frequent to the most infrequent. Now, language is pretty... Uh, well, it's a good example of these things, um, but it, you know, it has stuff that's quite weird. So there we have all the words, and then we can make a lexicon, which is just we have, what are the words in our, in our book? So the, we just make a straight list. So the, we don't, we don't put the numbers. It's just the, uh, Moby, you know, call, me, Ishmael. All right, so that's your, that's your list of words. And then you go over and say, well, how many of these words appear once? in a text. And this is pretty, this is not just Moby Dick, this is very general. Half of those words in this list you have will only appear once. Halfax legomena. It's pretty weird. It's quite strange. The, the word the usually appears three to four percent of the time. Um, maybe six words will account for 20 percent of all of the words. Maybe 150 words will account for 50 percent of them. If you're a journalist, you get paid by a word. So 20% of your income will come from the and of and 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 a, which is weird. But don't tell anyone, because they wouldn't pay, I'm sure they wouldn't pay you for, for the if, <laughs> if they figured that out. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a pretty weird socialist thing to do, right? So you don't have $20 words or 50 cent words. You just have, they're all the same. OK, my wife's a journalist, so that's what's going on there. Uh, anyway, this book uh, is now back in print, so you can, you can get a copy of it. But he knows about all these things, city sizes, right? It's not exactly perfectly true, da, 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 all these things, but city sizes, you take all the cities in our country, do the same thing. Uh, you can take the number of species in a genus, right? Count them all up, all these sorts of pieces. So <clears throat> citations, uh, you know, we have a lot of data on this and uh, the science of science, which is sort of navel gazing, but pretty interesting thing to work on, um, has been actually going on for about 100 years and feeds into this bibliometrics, the science of bibliometrics, very interesting. Uh, so this is, this is from Nature, uh, the journal Nature. It's hard to read this, but this is, a, this is just, let's, these are all papers ever written, right? And, and so they're not uh, indexed in any way by how much they've been read. We're just going to take every paper that's ever been written at this point, stack them, and they're ordered by their citation count, right? So my cite, cited paper is up the top, and that's uh, uh, on uh, extracting proteins, and it's 300,000 citations, which is pretty good. Um, <laughs> And that's sort of the same thing. And what you actually see in the top 100, this is the top 100 papers. They're up there. Um, the top 100 papers, most of them are about methods. They're actually a, about how to do science. Statistical methods, lots of things with proteins. Um, they're about scientific methods, you know, scientific papers about doing science. So it makes sense. But, you know, Einstein's papers aren't in there. And DNA, the, you know, the discovery of DNA, they're not in the top 100. You sort of think they are. They, they get great popularity. Of course, they do well for themselves, but not in citations. So this up to here, it's hard to see, but that, that bar there, these papers have zero citations. Not a biscuit, right? Nothing. Yeah, no one cares. These ones have, I think, like one to three up to here. So uh, Google Scholar is what most of us use now to look at how our papers are doing, sadly. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, do not refresh every minute because it's not, not going to happen. Um, <laughs> You could actually make a blocker for it. Anyway, so um, you, what, you, what, what they have, they, they give you a little score if, you get a, if a paper gets uh, 10 citations, right? So there are various metrics associated with your little list, but one of them is how many papers got 10 citations? Because it's like, you know, it's, it's awesome. Um, anyway, so this is very, you know, this sort of, this, this is kind of how fame works, right? Um, and uh, it means we can't really sort everything out. Again, this is a word thing. This is from an old corpus that English used. But this is give you a sense of these things, right? These very basic words here. This is out to 2,000. You're getting out to some words that, eh, you know, interesting. Uh, this is from Jonathan Harris, who uh, was on Shelburne Farms and has done all sorts of interesting things. I would uh, suggest you look up his work if you have not seen it. Just a history of incredible art science projects. And so this is exactly what he was doing. He's playing around with a... Uh, a um, a text, a corpus, and, and then arranging words on this interactive thing. It was in Flash, so it's dead now. But, um, uh, you know, the of and to, and you can play around with it, and then zoom in on things, right? He did a sneaky thing, too, which is to see what words people search for and 
you can probably guess what they searched for. Okay. People. And then people did sort of the Bible code two thing where they started to find little patterns of words. It's really silly. Okay. All right, uh, so language, so you need all these tools of these rare words. They're very important, right? And so this is from XKCD again. This is you're trying to describe everything or a whole bunch of things with um, given some, you know, some basic corpus to, to start with. Uh, only words that appear in the top 1,000 um, of that. So up go a five, that's this rocket. Um, it, it's really a boat that goes under a sea is a submarine, right? So it was a ridiculous game that he made himself to, sort of quite torturous. Um, uh, machines for shooting boats, so that's torpedoes. <laughs> the, 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 oh, the, the evacuating chambers, empty rooms. Anyway, it's, it's really yeah, it's quite charming. But it's a struggle. You, know, you need all of these rare words, right? They're, they're very information rich, but you don't use them that much. You can play around. This is an interesting thing to test your vocab. I think it's still online. Um, where they ask you a bunch of words, and if you get them all right, it sort of pushes you further out into the distribution because you're not going to ask someone 40,000 words, right? That's going to take a long time. So how do you sample from these things properly? Um, I, uh, I ran it by um, Jacques Bailey, who some of you might know, but he's, uh, he's in um, classics here, and he's the, if you don't know this, I'm happy to tell you, he's the spelling bee um, question asker. Is that what he is, the spelling bee? What, what do we call him? The, the pronouncer. <laughs> He's the pronouncer uh, for, the, for the Scripps Spelling Bee, which he won in like 1981 with a lucubrate, which means to study into the night. Midnight oil is the uh, word in there. Anyway, so he, he has a very large vocabulary. I think you can get an A in his class if you can give him a word he can't spell. Okay, here you go, which is a fair game. I don't think anyone's won that. Um, earthquakes, right? Again, lots of different things. This is one of these uh, heavy tail distributions. Most of the time, things don't happen. Okay, so we're going to get to fame, and uh, here's our question mark, people. It is BTS. Okay, so K-pop fans, um, I, I mean, I just have to report on the truth of Twitter, which is that K-pop rules, basically, right? So, and in particular, BTS. Okay, this, this paper, this uh, article in Vox, just, I was just Googling for pictures, because that's fun. Um, and uh, this just appeared today, right? So the US is trying to understand what's going on with BTS. But um, the rest of the world is very excited about this. So uh, pretty much. No, they're, 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 big in, they're big in the US as well, right? They were just on Saturday Night Live, I think, and doing all sorts of The Grammys, huge. OK, so uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, Korean pop, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'll show you some. I don't really understand like, how much they've been talked about. OK, so this, this is a little effort to look at fame. Just again, this is about being talked about, and I'll have some puzzled things after, inspired by Michael, um, who's in the audience, I think. Uh, so these, this is Obama being talked about, and I, I kind of set those things up a little bit to maybe help with this. This is a logarithmic scale, so this is 1 million, 100,000, 10,000, 1,000, and we'll keep that throughout, 100, 10, and 1, right? So these are where the and of and 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 those words are here. Now this is... These are the words we're going to look at just on this, this slide. This is the handle for BTS, which is how they're most commonly referred to. Uh, and this is, uh, these, uh, what I have here are um, the main people who have run for president, right? This is an examination of how much they were talked about. Obama is pretty famous all the time, basically. This is pretty high. Um, you see uh, his lowest point was uh, Christmas Day, actually, in 2011, so which... You know, like you're up against some competition because Christmas is talked about, right? So like even Obama went down there. McCain, you can sort of see there's very high points here. This is his passing. Uh, Romney, when he ran, is usually down in what we'll call the lexical abyss, right? And so this is, um, and this is, this is the God level thing. And the reason that we came across God is that it's here, right? God is usually about the 300th most common word on a, this is day level. And so I guess we're, but it's, it's sitting there, and most of the words in that top 1,000 are function words. Now we're not just taking English, we're taking every language you can find on, on Twitter as well. Right, so there's Arabic, there's all sorts of stuff pushing in. Um, you don't have to worry about these too much, but I'll put on all of these graphs this God level, right, which is this dashed line. So this is, this is ultra fame if you're up here. You're being talked about a lot. So it makes sense that uh, around these elections, people are being talked about, so Hillary is talked about. You see her go down. Uh, but never back to where she was before, right? So this is a phase change for how she's talked about. And we can, 
you know, the, the stories that are wrapped around, that's something we work on, like trying to do that in an automatic way. It's a huge effort to wrangle these tweets into a box that um, doesn't explode. We have a machine called Hydra, which is appropriately named. So you see Trump uh, falling away here. This, is, uh, th this would have been a celebrity apprentice thing. This is talking about running, talking about running or complaining about the election. And this is going down the escalator or whatever it was, right? So this is a huge jump. This is very unusual. And then after this, he is just in the top 200, basically, all the time. I mean, it's just, it's just he's sitting there competing with words like, you know, them and basic words. You know, chicken is way behind him. You know, like any word you can think of that's sort of a remotely interesting word is way down here. Okay, so the thing that maybe, you know, politicians thought is B this is the ascent of BTS. BTS is formed in a laboratory at this point, right? There's seven boys who look the same, just put together. It was like 15 years old, I think. And, you know, the English do the same sort of thing. Um, and they just went through the roof. And they are, these are, you know, it's bots and all sorts of things going on. But this is, this is a round of awards. This is uh, May 20th. May in this year was extraordinary, right? There were a lot of things happening, but this is just being talked about enormously. And in fact, they were the third most common word on that day, which is nuts, right? So they were, um, it was like A, the, and then BTS tweet. <laughs> so Trump got up to 11 here, which is also crazy. Obama got to 16 back on his election day. Obama is 16 on the day of the election, Trump is the day after, because that's when he was most surprised. And the highest point for Hillary was the day of the election. All right, so I want to look at that in a couple of different ways. We're going to just take these and make it kind of a, a histogram and to maybe help you understand like what these levels of fame are. I'll, I'll attach a few things. Okay, so these are histograms. So we've just kind of got and scrunched all these, um, these daily points together. And so this is Obama, right? This is Obama's histogram. It's like, this is where he lives. Right, sometimes he's up above the God level. This is, I guess he got to 14. And that's typically where the word me is, which is nice. Okay, so on average, the word me is there. Uh, usually his median rank is around where the word UK is. So what we'll do is we'll take the God level and below that use uh, what, where countries are talked about as, as pegs. And then above that, we'll just go into function words, right? So A is the most common word overall uh, because it's not just English. In for 10th, 32, and has, right? So this is R and has here. And then we'll move into countries because they give us a, so Kiribati, yes, um, is down here. It's usually ranked about a million, okay. And um, Bhutan, I mean, these are, we know these places. It is US centric Twitter as well, so there's that. Um, but, right, so America's up here. And again, that's gonna be North America, so all sorts of America, Captain America. Um, <laughs> yep. Okay, and then, so this is, this is so in a sense, you know, Obama is like the UK, right? Although there'll be no Obama exit. Uh, this is his lowest point, was around what Malaysia is. And then you look at these other characters, so these are people who ran against him. This is uh, uh, McCain and then Romney. Romney got down to Guangxi here, usually around Haiti, uh, Uganda really for McCain, but they got up to at and your. There's more competition, more words coming along. So. Although it still remains a little surprising that this is the highest that Hillary got to. I'm using the words that were most commonly used to refer to them. Um, it, you know, I, I feel bad that this is going to be men's last names here, but you know, Bernie changes that a little bit, right? That you need a name that sort of is not um, like Buttigieg or however you say that. Um, you know, you want a name that's got some, uh, you know, claim some namespace. Uh, so this is Hillary. So she, uh, so we'll break this into two things. She, she was more at Greece level, but after the election, she's where France is. Uh, and her, her highest point is where the word was is usually. Uh, Trump's highest word is, is. this is you know, total Bible code stuff, but you know, like is and was. And he, but here's the thing, Trump after the election, before he's where Afghanistan is, after it, he's much more where He's, he's above the God level, and he's where well, you have to equate him with a function word. There aren't country names up there, right? Country names aren't this famous. So the word's still. These guys, this is all about their ascent, right? So again, they got to three, uh, and that, over that whole period, they're around about America, but they are ridiculously talked about, which I'll show in other ways. This is an effort to see how much they were talked about this is uh, before the elections, right? So there's 2008, 2012, 2016. 
Here are the names. We've got the first name, last name, and then the handle. And Obama was the most talked about, even though his rank wasn't high, but he, we're going to set him at 1,000 as a reference. And then you can see that McCain got to like 800 roughly, so that's a four, five to four um, margin for him. Uh, whereas Trump, and so this is sort of trying to equate everything, or, you know, to equalize everything across these different time frames, which is a, a bit tricky. Here's Trump, 700, so not quite talked about as much as Obama. And again, there's more stuff being talked about here. But if you look at this, he's got a 700. He's got a much bigger ratio to Hillary. I mean, he's talked about as two to one. And we know, you know, lots of studies and whatever you personally think about it, but I mean, you know, the way they were talked about was quite different. Everything was about emails for, for Hillary Clinton. Thank you, New York Times. Okay, so zeros for our friends BTS, and, but they're starting to take off, right? They start to exist here. They're not really competing. God is doing pretty well. And there are various ways to look at this. This is then just at the year level. Uh, and if you go for a whole year, then Trump becomes kind of the, the handle. He's talked about a lot, talked about a little less in, in the last year, um, but BTS. <laughs> Off the thing. And so Obama, you know, he, had, he was talked about enormously before the election, but then when it gets into it, you know, he's still talked about a lot, but you see, you know, he goes down, right? He, and you see, if, I didn't really show up, but he, you know, he's up and down day to day, not talked about all the time. Trump never goes down. He is on all the time, in a sense. Okay, we don't have to worry about those. Okay, so I was going to show you a few little um, puzzle ones, and then we'll get to turbulence. So this is inspired by um, Michael Arnold today. Well, I guess I like to do these sorts of little puzzly things too. Um, uh, but anyway, I don't think these, these will be too hard. I can't even remember them. All right, so these are time series now for other things. I'm showing the ones for these politicians. These are just for all sorts of things, um, and you shouldn't know what these are. But you can see seasons in here, right? So we're doing a socio-technical time series, and it's really, there are these shocks, you know, terrible things happen or whatever it is, or big events happen. But there's also an enormous amount of what we talk about that's driven by the sun and the moon and the earth spinning around, right? So there's, you know, there's big things that control our existences. So these are spring, right? So these are a lot of, uh, I don't expect anyone to go. I just threw some ridiculous ones in here. There's coffee and water and, and air, um, just to see how they're doing, right? Are they going up and down? Now, a little bit of this, you can see like there's some jaggedness here, right? So we'll get to that, right? There's a little more what I'll call turbulence uh, as you go along in time. And that's been really, uh, a feature of the last few years, which you may have your own personal experience of and so on if you read the news a lot or too, you know, too many tweets or something. But, you know, it's hard to know, you know, no one wants to read 10 million tweets a day. That's a bad thing to do. You shouldn't do that. That would hurt a lot. <laughs> anyway, we make machines do that for us, kind of. Uh, so this is, uh, well, maybe you can get this one. Well, you know what it is because you made this one today. But you see this kind of interesting cusping thing uh, and there's a whole set of them, and they're moving across, moving across. So these are just simply the mentions of the year. Yeah. Uh, in 2018, 2008, we have just the start of that. We started our collection back then. Yeah, we have about 60 terabytes of tweets, high-quality human writings, 10% um, of all tweets, basically. But you see, yeah, they cusp a lot at the start and, uh, and at the end. So that's a, you know, nice things to see. Um, okay, what's this one? Right, this is... Avengers, just a funny little thing. So Endgame, which, you know, you're being forced to know about probably through all sorts of, um, you know, media outlets and everything, possibly people who talk about it. But, you know, this thing, this thing is still set to explode. It's like 10 days away. Just interested to see how these things have gone up and down. Stanley, so this is his passing here. Okay, what's this one? Mm, right, this was a good one. So this is the one you might, it's, it's a pretty famous thing that's come up, it's television. Um, and this is the, the giveaway here, maybe. Yeah, Game of Thrones? Yeah, right. So it had a, it had a year off, and now it's taken off again. Um, you know, I'm showing you these things, but then there's a whole body of work that we're doing that automatically tries to find events and, and group them together and so on. Veep, Veep doesn't get as much. Um, what's this one? So this is terrible, right? So this is um, Notre Dame, and you see the spike for it is here and here. Paris is a little more complicated. There's the, um, uh, the, the attacks back then as well. Okay, what's this? Hmm. See, I can't remember either. Okay, uh, right, so we've decided we should have measles again. Um, and so kind of crazily, we're, we're, so one thing, so you get very, 
what, I, what I'm showing you actually, and Jane's working a lot on this, is what will, these, these viewers of individual words, this is from Twitter. We haven't done this before. No one's really done this, right? You can't get this online. If you go and want, want to find how words have appeared on Twitter, they don't, it's not around. You can do things like Google Trends is the best thing, probably just sitting around. It's a different thing. That's what people search for. And a friend of mine who uh, works on Contagion recently showed me, which kind of partly inspired, I mean, I've done a lot of work on Contagion anyway, but inspired me to kind of make this one because he showed me this uh, time series, much like this, you know, what, what do you think this is? And it was a time series that didn't do anything much and then suddenly started to oscillate wildly through the summer and it searches for bed bugs. Now, people don't tweet about that, but they'll search, you know, people search for things that they don't want to talk about, right? So, you know, um, I, I don't want to say that personally we don't want to do things. Well, we, we, we want to help individuals if we can, but, you know, you know we, we don't want to do anything that ends up being used in a you know, totalitarian state situation. Um, we're interested in sort of population things and trying to help the world. Okay. All right, tetanus, Ebola, right? Is, is the U.S. going to have Ebola is basically what that is. Um, yeah. Okay, what do we got here? Interesting. Oh, this is fun. Okay, so these are, um, I'll tell you what it is. So these are uh, uh, online sites, right? So these are tech sites or, you know, like social media sites. And so you might think, what is this one? Mm, these are good ones. I like them. Yes, it's MySpace. It's totally my MySpace, which managed to delete most of itself recently. You know, just extraordinary. Right, everything before 2016 is gone. Or to, yeah, like really gone. Right, it's just gone. They just were moving servers or something, and they're like, "Oops, <laughs> all your music is gone." Which for probably 99% of people were like, "Okay." <laughs> that helps me with my job interviews. Um, but it's interesting to see just Snapchat, you know, kind of not doing so well. Instagram, which is basically feeding off Snapchat for ideas, is um, doing well. Yahoo manages to exist for some reason. I don't know why. It's still there. But, you know, these, some of these things are about to have big IPOs. Slack, you, you know, Slack, totally normal word. All Slack's exi existence seems to have done is make it more and more, you know, thirsty. It didn't, like, take it off. IPO, not really a thing. Uber is strange, right? So it's up here. Um, Lyft is very strange to me, right? This is when I think they offered everyone free Lyft's home after New Year's Eve. Uh, and, but it had a real dip here. It's just had its IPO. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering how close Yeah, their IPO is right. If I've got it right, it's like, it's here. Yeah. It is weird. Yeah. I mean, what's going on, guys? It's a good name, you know. I mean, it sounds like Lyft, but it's, you know, when spelling, it's good. Um, I don't know if these ones are going to have IPOs. Um, <laughs> Pinterest is, uh, and they'll probably make lots of money. That seems to do well. But they're sort of funny. Okay, what do we got here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so depression, uh, which you know, has kind of slowly gone up and it's got more JAG stuff. These are main medicines. They seem to have been going down. We're starting perhaps to do some work with AMA on predicting health trends and what people are talking about. Here we see bad things, opioids. Um, <clears throat> so in a sense, Twitter ex is expressing more about depression, but it's not taking the medicine. Um, Okay, I've got a few on uh, the election coming up. So I'll try to structure these as um, the, the handle, and you can, you know, the problems with namespace, and we will do two grams and three grams in these things. Uh, and then uh, first name, last name. Some of them have pretty good namespace, but you see them come from nowhere, right? So this handle is not talked about. Beto gets, and there, his peak was back in November, actually. This is up to date to today, I should say. Biden, what's going on with Biden? Um, Warren, who has all these great ideas, but no one, you know. You know. But you, you know, you see like how, how high do they get up to, right? It's not quite breaking into that point there. Um, you know, I've got a few more on the next one. So Gillibrand doesn't, I mean, these are, again, names that people can't spell probably, but they are good solid names and, and they really refer to one person. Not really kind of taking off too much. Um, if you're interested in that, the pudding has a really fun thing where you try to spell names of famous movie actors and you get to see all the little routes that people went on and misspelled them. Um, Putting Duck Cool, very nice. And then basketball players, and they're like Gyllenhaal, like, you know, spell it, you know, and people are like, ha ha. Okay, uh, so Cory Booker, this is Bernie, so his handle wasn't, you know, he didn't, wasn't using it. This is, who knows, you know, people just reference it for fun, even if it exists or not. 
which you see is kind of tracking here. Um, Howard Schultz had his little day in the sun, <laughs> um, but did not use that Twitter handle. I guess it existed. Join, you know, 2000, like someone joined for him. Again, Howard, pretty common names, but not really getting there. Bujaj, who totally owns that name, um, that's uh, April 16 is his little high point there. So he's coming up. Castro, not so much. Uh, and then Gab out ahead. Okay. And this one is, ah, these are just, I have another one I'll show you. There's, an, there's one more political one I'll, I'll show you. Anyway, these, these were interesting just to put these out because they're all kind of going down a little bit and getting, again, this more, more jagged. Um, these are due with hurricanes. Uh, Michael has um, some beautiful work coming on, on that about terrible thing. Uh, but you see hurricane right, being talked about. Right? This is something that happens frequently. This is Hurricane Sandy spike. Uh, Irene spike right here. Uh, Harvey is enormous. And then this is really kind of shocking. So Irma was talked about a lot, but Maria just wasn't referenced. And it's very strange. Puerto Rico is talked about. We're still trying to figure this out, to be honest. It's a, uh, you know, we know terrible, you know, the, the tragedy of Maria, right? The, 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 um, you know, the, the, the damage and the, and the lives lost is, is far outstrips these others. Uh, but uh, it wasn't, it wasn't talked about. It's very codified these days too. You know, if you're talking about a, uh, a natural disaster, like a hurricane, hashtag Hurricane Marie. You just do it. It's going to auto-complete very easily, so it helps bring people together around these things. Okay, so you know this well, if you can remember. That is BTS. So I'll show you a few music ones. Um, BTS is Lady Gaga, who's sort of in and out of the news. This is Fifth Harmony, and this is the, their supporters. So it's quite enjoyable to look at the, uh, the supporters' names, because they eventually end up with a, some way to group themselves. BTS, it's BTS Army. So this is Ariana, big fan. Um, Grande, uh, and this is so. So this is a you know a sad aspect of this is that the spikes for a lot of uh, individuals and, and, and entities are about when something truly terrible happens to them. And so this is the Manchester shooting at our, uh, Ariana Grande's concert. That's also where the word concert spikes, and her first name as well. Arianators, that's her people. They have their little thing. But it doesn't look so great for Fifth Harmony. Do they split up? The people who did split up is the Jonas Brothers. This is actually how I found out they split up because I was, <laughs> I, I just truly, and then I was, I was about here when I figured that out. I'm like, oh, I wonder about that. And it, so they died completely. Went, and then, but they got back together. So good talk to you. Uh, you know, these are supposed to be big names, but they don't really pop. Yeah. So this is uh, the Believers, right? They're not believing anymore. This is the belief. <laughs> The believe is gone. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's kind of fading away. It had to happen, thank God. Okay, so what, what about this one? So these ones are, I'm going to say these ones are probably possibly quite very much glitches where someone is referencing something. It's a short handle. At, and some of you know what it is. Um, but it's a, so it's a political figure. And it's a handle that exploded just here. And it's really one of the top ones that's talked about now. And there's some. <laughs> Any guesses? Fox really loves, you, you, yeah, it's cheating. I'm married to you. Yes, AOC. Um, yeah, so I, I, I haven't been able to quite, I did, I did a little bit of digging, but you know, she's sort of given the handle at this point. I know she's been on Facebook for a long time, but got rid of that actually. Um, and Instagram, that's the thing. Uh, anyway, yeah, she went boom. So she's right up there above America, which is probably something. <laughs> that's no good. That's like, yeah. Okay, these ones, these are, okay, so these are, this is religious, this is bad. Um, I'm gonna say it's bad. Uh, so God again, religion, Jesus. These are, you know, little hand selections, this is Pope. So this is, this is one, again, one of the examples, church. So you can see the weekly cycle in there. It's hard to tell, but that's a weekly cycle, mosque and synagogue. The awful thing about this is, you know, the, these peaks, this is a Boko Haram um, attack in Nigeria. This is New Zealand, which is dreadful. And uh, this is Pittsburgh. So these are terrible events that spike these things. Okay, uh, I'll show you a few more things. This one, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, so it's sports. Uh, so, so the resting state for Twitter, when nothing bad is happening, is sports, music, and celebrities. That's like reviewed like 
bad things have gone away for a little bit. Memory's not that long. We'll go back to talking about, you know, Taylor Swift or something. But the, these people are incredibly famous. LeBron, who's not going to get, right? LeBron's in trouble. He's not going to get a, a big thing here. I'm not sure what will happen to these characters. You know, but Shaq is kind of fading away. But you see they don't quite, right? right? Brady is not anywhere near the soccer players. Coley? He's the captain of India and in cricket. Anyway, so um, a billion people love this man. And he's a glorious stroke maker. Okay. <laughs> Swashbuckling. All right, so uh, these are some more sports people. This is tennis. Uh, interesting little set of people. So Federer and Nadal. And they're still, they, you know, they're talked about, but they're not quite as famous. And again, this is one of these things. This is Serena in the um, US Open when she lost and wasn't happy and kind of, you know, got, yeah. So that's terrible, but that's when she's most talked about. Okay, these are, what's this one? Oh, yeah, so this just happened, right? Uh, so, Back up again, but I want to say that this is, yes, 219, 219. This is, of course, just golf. Um, that's when he got on TV and said, I'm sorry for what I did, and this is what I did. Yeah. Uh, because we do have the time back here. Yeah. So actually, one of our early sentiment things was looking at sentiment around events, and, and you, know, you could see it dip in around the words tiger. OK, these are going to be political ones at the end, but they're very Trump-focused. Um, so we'll see what happens with this. So Mueller and report Russia. It's obviously hand chosen kind of. It's kind of funny what, like how much this stuff is in here. Like wall, it's kind of gone away, but it was really, really high, right? This is around the election. Caravan, still sort of fading away. How much memory is in this system? Collusion was up, but this is now it's kind of peaked here. And then these are just sort of, so witch, right? Witch hunt, uh, talked a lot about. Okay, and I've got a few others. So white supremacy, I mean, these are amazing things to kind of feel like you should search for. Uh, this is unfortunately my birthday, personally, which doesn't matter, but this is uh, Char Charlotte, in the means I will remember the day um, quite well. It's Saturday, it's Charlottesville. Uh, so that's the spike for ridiculous words. You would never imagine the US, right? But Nazi and Nazis, uh, these are different kinds of spikings. And again, you sort of see, well, I mean, it's a little anecdotal at this point, but this guy, you know, it's sort of taking off. No one talks about John Moon there. Okay. Other, there was FBI Comey Rosenstein. You know, so he's sort of gone away. McCabe, right? These are kind of remarkable to see these words take up. And I know you, we all know about these things. Uh, yeah. Funny ones. Manafort. No one talked about Manafort. Uh, Papadopoulos is in here too somewhere. Maybe he's not on this one. Bar, right? right the 10th of uh, April was the peak for him. Or for that word, I should say. OK. Um, yeah, some other ones. Brexit exploded. Uh, MAGA is sort of taking off. And hashtag MAGA, you can see it's sort of a phase transition here. So hashtags are pretty powerful because you know, they're just not things that exist before. And usually, they tell a little story, right? They, they really, because they can have multiple words. And we're happy with that. Anyone want to guess what this is, right? So there's something that spiked here, and here, and here. This is not a not a great thing, unless it's your thing. Um, it's sort of to do with this. Madness. Uh, this is a conspiracy theory of uh, some repute. Pizzagate, hashtag Pizzagate. Uh, but this is different. This is Q, QAnon, QAnon, and then they, they spell this in different ways because spelling is not part of what you do. Um, yeah. It's a mouthful. Where we go one, we go all. I feel like I'm part of a, a cult, but this is this is the this is the uh, what, do, what do you call it? the motto, I suppose, for um, or the, you know for for the QAnon people. If you don't know about QAnon, possibly don't look it up. <laughs> uh, but you probably should know what it is. Uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Okay, so. Um, but it's interesting, this doesn't spike until recently on Twitter. This is in 2018. This exists back here, but doesn't really take off. The sun seems to have set. Yeah. Is that my? OK, I guess that's time to go, um, <laughs> which I understand. Yeah, but it's a weird one, isn't it? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really nearly finished, but I'll, let me see if I can just uh, Oh, 
It is purpling a bit, isn't it? I don't know if I can fix it because I can't quite get the whole thing. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Whatever. All right. It's enough. You can see. All right. All right. I'll just show you an effort to measure the speeding up of time. Okay. So this is a really boring day. And I say that because this is the day that the day before, the difference between those two days was the smallest of all the last 10 years, right? So it was just like nothing much happened as you went from that day to the next day. And these are the top 36 words. Not much happening. This is the top 36 words on the day that BTS was talked about the most. And it's not just BTS. They are punishing the lexicon. They are really hammering Twitter. So there's BB Mass, BTS, and they, right, it was about trying to get them voted to, uh, in to win an award. It's just insane. Um, this, is way, this is the lexical abyss. So this is this boring day. These are the first 12 words. This is out of 10,000, 100,000, and a million. And you see, you just, you know, these, these are words that, um, foreign languages that didn't work in my renderer thing. Uh, but these are handles that no one really talks about. These, are, these have got maybe 10 mentions on that day. We get 10%, so they've probably got 100. Um, so these are just, you know, nonsense out here, but there are good words. I mean, enlightenment, totally great word, but it's like, you know, off in the abyss uh, at 100,000, not being talked about a lot. Um, but yeah, quite reasonable words. Hashtag everything. That's totally fine. Charm, totally great word. Um, delegating, normal word. But again, it's a mixture of everything, hashtags, ats, you know, uh, handles, and different languages. Let us just give you a sense of the misspelled fishes that lie at the bottom of the, the lexicon. Um, this is maybe a little too much, but the idea is we can take the rankings, this is the word rankings on one day and the rankings on another day, and then you know, plot them together. And if they were all exactly the same ranking, you just see a nice big straight line here. These words appear more on this day than they did on this day, and they're the same for this. And so this is a little way of kind of throwing this out. And you can see Kristen Stewart Patterson. So this is not much is happening. This is a really boring little part of the last 10 years. And they're talking about that, and they're talking about some, uh, some soccer games and some stuff like that. Nothing is happening, right? So that's pretty boring. But you see this kind of widening here. This is comparing two pretty intense days. This is the day after the election in 2016, and this is, uh, 2000, this is um, Charlottesville. So you know, they're going to be quite different. You see they're really pulled apart. The days, these words like Trump, V is there as well, but Donald, Hillary, election, president, voted. All these words are there. Obama as well. And then all these sorts of things. Nazis. Lady Gaga had a concert, so they're going to talk about her. Uh, so did Zara Larson, so they're in there. Nazi, BTS, because BTS. Um, but then there's Haya here, or Haya. I'm sorry if I've said that incorrectly. Uh, Heather Haya, who's the woman who was murdered. Uh, XO, which is another K-pop band. Okay. Um, <laughs> You know, and this is just recent. This is just something to show. This is around Valentine's Day. So it's the 13th to the 15th. Uh, and that's when Trump declared a national emergency. Right. Uh, so if you plot these, the distribu these rank distributions, they look the same. But of course, the words are all jumbled. It's like taking an enormous pack of cards and then jumbling it again. But you've got all these new cards as well. It's a very strange thing to do. Anyway, you know, you've got 30 million cards. It's a difficult thing to shuffle. Um, but Trump, president, national emergency. But a lot more things happen on this. So this pop, this little thing we have here that kind of orders things, uh, CRPF and Polwama, that's the India-Pakistan uh, attack. Pakistan shot down a couple of planes from India. And of course, you know, we're, that's not good. Jawan, that's another Indian word. So they pop up as well. It looks like there was an ad for clear skin. So that kind of um, got pushed in there as well. OK. <laughs> And then Ajax, this is about um, soccer, right? That was the day before. Okay, so there are these ways of looking at um, things. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm just putting these here for comfort. Um, <laughs> this is uh, one particular measure. I won't go into too much, but this is trying to compare. Basically, what's the difference? It's like a distance measure between dis these distributions. Uh, and this is day to day, right? So you can see, like, it's, this is slowly going up. So the days are slowly becoming more different from each other. And we can do this at the two-day scale, and the seven-day scale, and the 28-day scale, and then out to six months and a year. It turns around, actually, at the longer scale, three years and four years and so on. It's actually not as turbulent more recently. But the, 
you know, what we're interested in is like, what does a week in 2018 feel like in 2013? Like, there's this, there's this much turmoil in the lexicon. How much, over say a week, how many days did we have to go, go over in 2013 to have that same amount of turmoil or turbulence or churn? And so this is really the sort of summary plot. This is one measure. It's probably you know, going to change when we get it to a paper. But let me see if I can go through it. So this is last week feels like a year. When last week feels like a year. So a span of one day ending in 2018, in terms of how much turnover there was, feels like this in previous years. So just days, really. But then 1.3 months in 2013, was, which was kind of not much to happen. Two days starts to jump, right? It feels like three days, they're not so different, but now it's at the month scale, even 10 months. A week feels like two weeks, three months, three months in these two years, getting close to a year, right? In terms of how much stuff is just bubbling over. And yes, part of it is BTS's fan base, but um, it's also just all of these crazy things like Space Force, you know, like there's just stuff that comes along. You're like, oh, that is a, um, you know, Nazis and nuclear war with North Korea or not. These are four weeks going out to a year. And then once you get out to a year, that kind of is still like a year is still kind of feels like a year, right? But it's just that how much is feels like it's happening. And I have to be, be careful with the word feels, but you know, this changeover in language, right? This kind of, you know, this bubbling of language, which is reflective of, so Twitter is this melange of all sorts of stuff. There are bots, there are, of course, but there is, you know, there's news, there's there are people talking about their cats. You know, there's just all sorts of stuff. Um, and there's joke Twitter, there's animal Twitter, you know, people who medically seal themselves off for psychological reasons um, and keep themselves away from the other parts. And very much political Twitter. Okay, so that's, that's kind of where I, I, I want to finish. This isn't, you know, a done thing, but, uh, and I've been like exploiting my mind over it, I suppose, but uh, I think it's there. I think we can kind of quantify that more than just saying it is speeding up, but I think we can get close to this this way of doing it. Um, that's my cat. Our cat. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's enough. So we have time for a few questions. Yes, Scott. So a lot of this is based on Twitter feed. I mean, is that a representative cross-section of everything we talk about? No, I, the last thing I said is, is, is sort of part of that. It's a, it is a melange, you know, like early on, maybe Twitter wasn't such a big deal, 2008, but it's a, you know, the news is out there. And, and of course, their algorithms push things up in funny ways as well. I should mention that, right? Twitter's own internal mechanisms, which is a huge issue just all the way through these things. They basically set things on fire, you know, especially Facebook. Um, we do have Reddit. You know, Reddit's another source to look at. Um, you know, I would say 10 years ago, we there was nothing of a big scale to play around with, right? And, and we, the first thing we went for was State of the Union speeches for your 200 years, which was kind of an interesting thing to look at. But I would say, yes, um, we've got Reddit. Um, we could look at some other things. Facebook, you can't get it. To go back into like the next previous generation, N minus one, go look through Usenet, Usenet archives. Yeah, that'd be great. Because they won't have deleted themselves like MySpace, right? Yeah. So you were um, you were saying that there are certain manipulations in terms of promotion of, of uh, certain terms within Twitter, um, but my understanding is it also works in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. um, and that's 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 why I knew that that BTS was definitely going to be at the top of that list because one of the things that happens is that um, BTS doesn't really show up on uh, the trending list, right? Unless it uh, sort of accidentally. That's interesting, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Twitter does do some funny things. It's, it's unclear how they run some of that stuff, yeah. They're always at the top, though. That's kind of the problem. It's not like they took off today. Mm -hmm. But I, in a sort of related uh, yeah. question, you, you looked at a couple of earlier uh, musical acts that might have had that type of uh, trajectory. Have yeah, like at Lady Wonder Gaga and so on and whatever. Yeah, and, I'm, and we haven't done this exhaustively. I'm yeah. Sort of, yeah. But well, it would be super interesting to do that properly. Yeah. I, I was thinking that that yeah. probably has the most similar shape because I know that like 
um, One Direction fans were complaining. The direction is? Yeah, yeah, it, whatever. If we show, that, there's that, a beautiful wiki page on trending. this. I, you, I really recommend looking at the fan names wiki page. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. It's great. So, um, yeah, yeah, One Direction has been really huge on Twitter for us to like, look at over the years. I will mm. say that K-pop, BTS is the first time we've seen birthdays be like so pronounced that actually, yeah. But we have things like, there's a sad day on Twitter because one of the people, one of the guys left One Direction or something. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's, it is, you know, you look at Instagram, like the way some of these take, take off, they like really go explode and go like this, or do they build organically? And there's, you know, and you can model how that works and look at the mechanism. That, that slow growth is very powerful, right? That's what you, that's what you, it's great if you can do that. So, yeah, yeah, people believe. Could you say something about the, um, the size of the data? I mean, could this all be done on a laptop? Uh, the, the amount yeah. of computing power that it takes to, to do this and, and how much storage it takes well, to do this? Well, this cut down version. So we've taken all the tweets, and that's Josh, Minot, Michael, and I have been doing this. Um, Andy, Ray, lots of other people have been involved. Um, you know, just to process the tweets and break them into these uh, zip distributions at the day level, right? So that may, that gives you a, a something that you can put on a part of that you can put on a laptop. So you can put on the, the top one million words for each day. But you've lost all the structure of all the tweets. There's 60 terabytes, roughly, of, of tweets compressed, like squeezed together. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're building up. We've got this new machine where we're trying to build it up so that we can actually store all of them in a way that you could really search properly. Um, uh, it, it's just, yeah, it's an, uh, yeah, they're all massive text files, basically. And they're in 15-minute chunks. So, you know, if you want to tweet in, so about something, you have to go in and, like, you know, like search through all the boxes, basically, uh, and you don't want to do that. Yeah. So it's, it's really, so if we can get to that next level where we can say, oh, I want all the tweets, you know, about whatever, cats, and it would return it really quickly, and then also give you something about what's around, not, not just that, but also like what's around the, those words and those tweets and give you a like time series. So at this point, we've just kind of got that, you know, here's the shape, how, how much is being talked about. That's the first thing. Um, I know it's one of those things that just seems like right, you should be able to do it, but it's, it's hard and expensive. Time for one more. <laughs> I'm just thinking just, application like for this database, this, this mm. huge data set, like could you use this to construct like truly original tweets because you can see this, this histogram of like you can tweet something no one's ever tweeted before. So you, do, you, do, you, do you think you of these applications? You and, can, you can. Yeah. Well, I think I think the biggest thing is you, you could totally do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty weird what people tweet when you go further out into the outer limits. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, they're, 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 I mean, people do this very actively. Like the, the emulation and, yeah, right, and then sell the account. Um, well, there's, there's a lot, I mean, a major application is like, how much is something being talked about and how is it being talked about? What are those, so we have this thing called Story Wrangler where we're trying to do that. Like, what are the stories around a particular event? First, you identify the event, and then how is it being talked about, and how are those stories potentially fighting each other? So that could be for a company, right? Pepsi wants to know how it's, New terrible ad is working, right? You know, or um, but it, it, you know, it could be about a policy that you're trying to put in place. You know, how is it being talked about? And you, you know, we've gotten to a point where you can, well, you can sort of predict so, certain kind of reactions to things. So a mass shooting, there will be some stories. There'll be stories about crisis actors. Not Notre Dame. I mean, I guess I, we didn't say what the conspiracy theories would be, but you know, they're, they're things like. It was the Muslims were involved, and da, 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 you know, and there are videos, right? YouTube is in some ways probably the worst because YouTube videos they put up straight away, and they uh, people are very good at gaming the YouTube algorithm. And like the day after Parkland, if you search for Parkland on on YouTube, it shows you twenty sort of by default, and eighteen of them were complete conspiracy theories on um, crisis actors. Yeah. Peter, thank you so much. No, no worries. Thank you.